Are you ready? Where are you? Thing. Yeah, thing. Okay. All right. Hey, everybody. It's me, Peter. So, today, let's talk about the internet. I know. We're all surprised. And it's finally happening. This is the first video in a three-part series. Uh, this video is on the internet. And it also kind of talks about uh, my past, where I come from. Uh, and how I got here. The second video of the series is going to be on what I did while I was working for the Navy, to an extent, because a lot of it I can't talk about. And then the third video is going to be on what I plan on doing now that I'm not in the Navy anymore, now that I'm all grown up. Basically, what I want to do with the rest of my life. And I figured YouTube is a great place to put this because YouTube factors a lot into it. So let's get to it. My dad was an engineer for the city that he was working for back in the day, and so he was fairly computer savvy, I suppose you could say. And because of that, we always had a computer. I remember probably my earliest memories of computers, not the internet, but of computers, were probably 1992 approximately, I was about five. And I remember learning how to get onto the computer and using it to play games, and it was great. And so having technology be such an integral part of my life for so long, and I think a lot of kids these days can understand, uh, has really shaped how I've developed. Now when I was younger, I was a chunky, chunky monkey, uh, and I did not, well I had plenty of friends, but a lot of my friends they were school friends and none of them actually lived nearby me. I was also the youngest of five, and so my brothers often were playing with their own friends, and eventually, uh, since I spent so much time on the internet, I started discovering in different ways that, you know, this, this internet thing was a way to meet other people. Uh, but it was really cool because the people that you met on the internet back in the day, this is like 96 and 97, back then there was no concept, I think, of um, internet stalkers or predators or anything like that. And so when I went on the internet, nobody really cared. And then one day in July 1998, I found this website called Colony City. Now I mentioned Colony City before in my video where I talked about how Facebook bought out Oculus Rift. And that's because Colony City itself was an online virtual world that was in 3D and it was on the internet and it was cutting edge. Uh, not too far different from Oculus and what a lot of the developers for Oculus are doing nowadays. But when I discovered this website, this place called Colony City, to me it was a lot more than that. It kind of had video game mechanics because you could go in and there would be chat rooms and stuff like that, but then you would go in and you would pick a lot of land and then on that lot you would put up a house. And then in that house you could put stuff that you would buy at a virtual mall and you could actually walk around your house and you could have house parties and there were common areas like cafes and parks and plazas where the different people who lived in this colony city would go around and talk to each other and interact with each other and get to know each other. One of the best things that I liked about it, now looking back and probably one of the reasons that it had such a huge influence on my life is you had a degree of anonymity like you only revealed what you wanted to reveal about yourself and that's something that nowadays is a really hard thing for a lot of people to comprehend but back then that was the norm you had privacy and what got put out there about you was up to you like you didn't have to use your Facebook account to log into this or that or the other there was no Facebook in 1998 and so you controlled the information about you. And what I liked about that so much was that as an 11 year old, I could go on there and nobody would have any idea that I was 11. And this is a big deal because everybody else that was on this website was not 11. At the time, it was mostly populated by people in their 40s and 50s. But age didn't really matter. As long as you were respectful and you could write, like type well, age never came up. And that gave me a certain sense of anonymity so being a part of this community was such a great thing for me because again, I lived far away from all of my friends. By the time I came along, basically my parents were exhausted from having kids and so it was up to me in a lot of regards to socialize myself. So I guess you could think of it two ways. You could either think of if there had been no internet, maybe I would have gone out and talked to more people. Uh, but the way I kind of look at it is because there was an internet, I had a way to talk to people. I had a way to perform social interactions with others, to get socialized. So one of the things that I like the most about doing social interactions and getting socialized on the internet, and I think honestly it had a really positive effect on me, is it's not that you learn to judge people not by something, but it's that you didn't learn to judge people based on their gender or the color of their skin or their age or where they're from or any of that. You learn to judge them based on how they chose to present themselves, giving them total control of their identity. 
And that was awesome for me because I was a chunky kid. And I decided most of the time, like, I didn't want to present myself as a kid. Uh, I would rather present myself as a penguin or some random abstract piece of art. And that was fine because the way people reacted to that wouldn't be like, oh, why'd you pick a penguin? It's like, that's a good looking penguin. Being a part of this community gave me so much power over myself that I think that really helped me become self-confident in a lot of ways. Like you see me talking here and I like to think that I'm a pretty good speaker. Like I understand that a lot of people are terrified of, pu of public speaking. I get a little nervous, but generally when I think about it, it's like I'm talking to people. I'm talking to other human beings and that makes it a lot easier. And I think that growing up in an environment where what mattered more was the message I had rather than the appearance that came with it, I think that was very helpful to me being able to be such a good public speaker and being so sociable with others. So that's, that's why I liked Colony City. I did have friends growing up, like people in real life, friends that I played with at school and stuff like that. But all of my friends that were in real life, they were constrained to existing in my world in the context of school. So having somebody outside of school, having a bunch of somebody's to be around outside of school was very helpful. And also it's worth mentioning that Colony City was only Colony City for like a year. Um, and after a while it changed its name to Cybertown. So on the off chance that you wanted to go research some stuff about Cybertown, that's what you should be looking for, <laughs> not Colony City. I don't know that anybody calls it that anymore. But it was really beneficial for me to be a part of that because for a good nine years, I had a stable network of people who I knew I could talk to, uh, who were my friends, like sincerely, genuinely people I cared about and people who cared about me. And coming from a family, an environment where that wasn't always necessarily the case made a huge difference. And I think that's one of the reasons that when I look back, you know, I think of Cybertown as this awesome place where everything was great. And honestly, it, it paralleled real life in a lot of different ways. Like, I learned what it was like to be part of something when it first started. Like, Cybertown itself started June 1998, and I joined it in July 1998. And it went through like 2008, 2009. And to be able to see it grow up around me as I myself grew up it was such a trip and such a really great experience. And I'm really glad that I got it. But then in other ways, you know, I knew what it was like to fall out of contact with friends from that. And to see other people grieve when these people who I've never met before in real life passed away and to see that it was okay to have feelings and that grieving was normal was very helpful because while I was in Cybertown, a lot of things happened uh, in real life. Uh, a lot of people that I cared about passed away. I don't know, like you knew that these people that were on the other side of the screen from you were real people. And so how that relates to everything, the takeaway is that the internet has such a fantastic capacity to bring people together when they're separated by a screen or even in real life. I can't tell you how many people that I've interacted with on the internet that I count among my friends now, you know? Back in the day, people had these usernames and that's how you learn to identify this person, like Crash Dummy or Hawk or Flyby or Veil any number of different names. Mine was Vadim. And now, if you look at my channel name, CT Vadim, Cybertown Vadim, which just goes to show how big of an impact this website had on my life. There you go, now you know. But the idea that the internet has this ability to bring people together, like now that it's been 10, 15 years almost, I know these people's real names. I've been able to match their names to their faces and their voices, which is much more of a trip to me than anything. And I've met so many of them in real life, I can't even tell you. Like, these people are my friends. And when I think about that, and when I wrap my brain around the fact that these people exist and they are a part of the world just as much as I am, even though I went 10 years without meeting them in person, that's amazing. And that's what the internet gives us. And that's why I see the internet as this great tool to bring people together to help people and just to just in general decrease the average world suck per capita. So this has been my video on the internet. The internet is a great tool to let people come together and help each other and that's why I'm such a big fan. But hey, enough about me. What about you guys? How has the internet affected how you feel about other people and the world? Like how has it brought you together and are there cases where it's actually taken you apart from other people? 
uh, let me know either in the comments or in Twitter or Tumblr or wherever because uh, I want to know what you guys think. All right, guys, that's all I got. Hope you guys are well. Take care. Know that I love you and stay safe, and I will talk to you later. Okay, bye.